Now we're going to colorize the sketch. So first thing you have to do is remember to turn your file to RGB. So it was grayscale. Now I'm going to make it RGB and don't flatten it. And now I'm going to pull this texture over. This is kind of the color palette I want. And it's floating on top. I'm going to move it below. It's still a clipping path layer, so it's reading the silhouette below. And I just put it to overlay. Overlay has a nice way of blending. Um, you could also use color. Um, here I'm going to dupe it a couple times. And the reason I'm setting it up on the ribs and other areas specifically is that I might want to change how much color shows up on those individually. So this one is set for the big shape, but my other ribs uh, and those little custom details I put on were floating and they were still grayscale. So I'm actually colorizing those independently by making it a clipping path layer to the rib layer. So each one of those has a little color swatch over the top. And now I'm going to colorize the entire background. So it's more, it's, it's, it's still pretty monochromatic, obviously, and, um, but now it's got a little bit of color, it's got a little bit of texture. Yeah, it's starting to work. Again, whenever you duplicate a layer, um, you're going to lose your uh, clipping path hierarchy, so you just have to click that back and reactivate those layers. And now I'm going to play with the values. So I'm using a uh, levels adjustment checking to see if it's working against the background. Turning on and off my light, that's my color dodge layer. I'm going to move that over the top because it will mix differently. Uh, I wanted to light those ribs as well. I was losing too much of the, the basic form. I'm going to delete that little layer there. So not a layer, but a little shape. The back leg in this case and in this whole demo, when I look back at it, of course, it's that back leg just totally disappears. Um, but this is really, uh, really about a pipeline and how I would colorize and quick sketch. So, you know, the whole idea was to find a shape with custom brushes, stimulate your imagination, maybe get you to create something you wouldn't have normally drawn um, or created a different way. And now I added one layer to the very top. As you can see, that's that layer uh, 14 up at the top. And now I'm just going to do a detail pass. So it's, it's sort of like everything I created before is just my underpainting. And now I'm going to go back in and start to refine the forms, fold some shapes around, um, make it look more three-dimensional, try and find the design. Again, it's very much uh, the happy accident school of design, let's say. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's happy accidents, but at the same time, right, it's, it's quite controlled chaos. Um, you sort of, you, if you have strong foundation skills, um, you know how to show form with value, you know how to do reflective surfaces, you know how to draw in perspective, all of those good things, then I think it makes it much easier to use this level of abstraction. And it'll, you have the ability then to do something with it, as opposed to only staying at that abstract sketch level. So here, like for instance, that little uh, sphere, right? It's a glass eye or something in there. And it's reflecting that little panel that's sticking out on his cheekbone. And that's what I was reflecting back up into that eye. And then beyond that would be the ground. Um, so that's where those little bright spots came from. And here I'm defining his upper jaw, in this case, throwing some teeth in there. It's kind of a mechanical thing, as I said before. Um, and so I'm sort of doing this, you know, plates and things that are maybe welded or, or held together with who knows what, fasteners, wire, etc. Could also just be a fantasy piece. Um, we don't have a story yet to go with this guy, so it could be magic that's holding it together. It could be really mechanical things that are holding it together. Who knows? And at this point, it doesn't really matter. You just want to make something look interesting. You're trying to find a design. And so you'll see I'm picking all my values and my colors. This is now a full color sketch on top, and I'm picking those colors and values from my painting. And just making things turn under, right, by dropping them into shadow, and then uh, bringing back in a little reflected light, bringing back in some highlights where needed, right, wherever a surface would catch the light. And putting in that far side of that tooth on the far side there gives it a little bit of depth, right, even though it's a side view basically of this part of the head, um, it would still be in one point perspective. So we should be able to see through and maybe it's turned just enough that we see a little bit of that far side tooth. Of course, in the way this thing looks like it's made, it could definitely be asymmetric. 
Um, here I'm not erasing that layer, I'm just picking my color and value straight out of the background and painting in. It's pretty soft, the background, so um, I might even soften it more later. But uh, it works enough, especially for a quick sketch. So working around the outside is the time when you start to go in and refine your silhouette. And then what I try to do is look at that silhouette and imagine those forms wrapping from the center line that we see here to the sides of the shape. And as they wrap, they need to start with um, what's what the silhouette is giving us. And the silhouette's saying, you know, well, there's a notch here, so maybe that has to create a line when it wraps to the interior. So I try to make all those things blend out of the silhouette to the inside. Now you could have a silhouette that totally, you know, doesn't relate to the surfacing on the interior. Um, here I'm blurring the background a bit. Um, and that would be like if you had a singular thin blade inside view, right? Then that doesn't wouldn't wrap. So that, that part on the forehead, that could be a thin little fin up there, um, just above his eye to the left, right where I'm painting right now. So maybe those shapes don't wrap, right? Because if they were a thin little blade, they would just be a silhouette only, and we wouldn't really see any transitional forms or surfacing. Or I could do what I'm doing here, which is to make them connect and blend into those rib shapes that I used, that I created with the custom brush. And you'll see now, as opposed to being a thin fin, they're actually wrapping to the interior shape. And that gives it a lot more volume, even though I'm just working in side view through this part. It looks much more three-dimensional, right? And if you know about the foundation skills and my uh, matte shading DVDs, then you know about how form change um, is influenced by the value change in your rendering. And now I'm just sort of faking in some little details inside there. Maybe the light's shining through, catching a couple little interior shapes. And this sort of less like noodling and detail phase could, you know, this depending how tight you go, you can spend a lot of time here, um, especially if you're really resolving the shapes. Now, the reason I kept it at the layers where they were, you'll see now that I'm working back down on my basic first layer. And that's because I needed to, uh, I didn't want to try and, or I should say, I didn't want to lose the detail of those custom brush ribs. So what I'm doing now is going back to my base shape, extending some of those mechanical bits and pieces making them interconnect. So I want to have some gaps and things so it looks like it could actually have some mobility. And in a moment here, let's add a little bit more color and a little texture variation to his head. So I just brought in another uh, photograph I took of some more textured materials, you know, some rusty old car or something. And I'm going to put it on overlay. Let's zoom in a bit. Okay, now it's over the entire shape, so let's go here and float it over the whole thing. It was missing the ribs and my details weren't were floating on top, so I wanted to put it on top of my that detail layer that I was rendering. And now I'm just going to move it around until I like the position of the scars and the color, some scrapes and things. So you can see you can keep layering more and more color and more and more detail and texture, even over your painting. And now I've turned, made a little uh, layer mask there. And what I'm going to do is paint that, uh, paint back into it with black with a big soft airbrush, set to 100% opacity. And the effect is that I'm erasing it. Um, and the reason I'm using this big soft airbrush is that I'm just sort of letting it blend. I'm not trying to have that line up and go all the way out to the edge. So um, for this quick sketch, it's fine if it's loose and it's just uh, erased a little bit out at the edge. It'll get the point across. Maybe erase the teeth. Maybe those are separate material. Those are getting weathered differently. And I'm going to soften off that back edge as well. So I'll go back to my airbrush. I'm going to erase that out. I don't want his eye to be influenced by that weathered material. And I'm going to make the brush bigger, really soften that and blend it back into the rest of the body. So I'm really just trying to focus the attention and the focal point with the color up onto his head. And now I need to add, add a new layer to the very top, and this will become my new cleanup layer. Or we can go back to the original one. Either way. Uh, usually I add layers on top to the very top when I'm unsure about the design direction I want to take. So 
usually you just stack up new layers on top, give it a go, and if you don't like it, you can always delete it. And now I'm going back and refining more of the silhouette. So this is back to my basic cleanup layer. And more cleanup. More detailing. And now you've got to go in there and, you know, well, you don't have to, but uh, it's fun to actually go in and start to figure out what's happening in those shadow areas. How do all these shapes connect? Uh, try to make sense of the sort of randomness of your original sketch. And also the details that I added with the custom brush. And so I'm just adding little cut lines, making little surfaces bend. Uh, this is the sort of origami part of it. And by using the values, right, you can start to make surfaces point back up to the light source. Um, and you can fold them. The human brain is very, very um, sensitive to value change. So it doesn't take a lot of value change to make the form change. So I'm going through here, uh, casting a little shadow there to knock, knock that little brow under that little plate. And again, my lighting is from the upper right. So the nose is getting you know less light. Um, this cheekbone head area turns back a little bit. Um, it's not far, far from the right. It's sort of centrally lit, but a little bit from the right. So the blade sticking out is a little bit brighter. Um, and some of those edges for the plates on his back and his teeth are catching a little bit more light. And now I'm experimenting with, you know, pushing certain shapes back, pulling other shapes forward, adding in another cut line. And you can see how this can just keep going and going um, until, you know, you can add it with a really tight rendered piece that's fully resolved, um, or you can just keep it a sketch. In this case, we're definitely going to sort of stop at sketch phase. The whole idea of this DVD was to show you the pipeline of uh, one, using custom brushes to stimulate your imagination and help you see forms and shapes that you might not necessarily be able to create another way. And also my pipeline of layer organization and how I organize the layers and then colorize a grayscale painting um, and how actually loose a lot of these things start. And then just through spending more time with it, you go back in and resolve and make those connections of shapes. And then applying your foundation rendering skills, um, mostly going back to really basic, just basic light and shadow dropping certain areas into shadow, using reflected light to illuminate certain areas, and then using, of course, the direct light for any surface that is not hidden from it. So here I'm experimenting, dropping a little shadow through there. Um, so that's a little shadow from that little cheekbone area that's sticking out. And connecting all these pieces, again, leaving gaps and things, so it looks like this thing maybe could move um, and articulate. Pulling out a couple little interior forms there that the light's going to pass by those ribs and still shine down into those areas and pick out a couple of shapes. Again, we're doing something sort of abstract and sci-fi like this. It's it, A lot of it can be happy accidents. Um, that shape now I'm rendering with reflected light from below. So that little flange sort of it's more perpendicular to the light source below, and then the center line is more like a blade. So the center line is darker, and then the surface that's directed more towards the ground gets a little bit lighter. So I've just added in a little bit of light there and darkening, blending it back a little bit. Again, I'm just painting with one brush here. It's a triangle brush. It's got a little texture assigned to it, but um, you know, and it has pressure sensitivity turned on. So you can see I can glaze in with it. Um, I can also because it is a triangle, I can paint some fairly sharp edges. And going back up and a little more detailing. And now we're really into like the last five minutes of this tutorial. And it's sort of as it's accomplished what I wanted it to, which was to share with you my pipeline for starting with custom brushes. Uh, find your design, find the original shape, the silhouette proportion, get all of that working. Add detail with custom brushes. Uh, clicking and warping those shapes across your form, which I think is is really a great way to work. And then uh, adding some color, adding some texture, floating a layer back on top, 
and doing a little bit of cleanup. Uh, beyond that, there's really a, not a lot more to this technique. Um, this is a, a technique I use quite a bit when doing quick, loose sketches, especially when I need to sort of break out of things I would normally draw. I find it's quite quite helpful. It's got, I'm adding some more details. It's a, some little nostril air intake thing there. And bringing a little bit more light in there. Maybe that plate above his eye there is casting a shadow. Just a little more, more skylight as that thing rolls back to the the light in the upper left. So you see I just went up and picked that color and value from up there. That part's basically in the shadow and here I'm trying to get my silhouette to reinforce that form as it wraps across and here I'm going to pick out that edge with a little bit of light that's brighter than the rest so by doing that it really sets that front area into shadow. as it rolls away and that really helps that to look like it's much more three-dimensional because we have a very large value change. And that's basically it. Quick sketch from grayscale to color and I hope you found it helpful.